What a beautiful day. This is gonna be a great trucking day. So we're here at the Husky in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. This is where we spent our night. It was a glorious night, it was a great night. And this is our load, have you seen it? I showed you it yesterday a little bit, but that's the whole thing. Just over 6,000 pounds on there. And it's, it's a full load, it's a FTL full truck load. Looks like I almost got nothing on there though, eh? <laughs> and off we go. I'm actually stopping at Flying J on the other side of town to grab my fuel there and a coffee, so. I should probably take a shower too. Uh, I need a shower. So off we go. You just feel it though, it's like one of those sunny days. Like the temperature is just perfect. It's gonna be such a good day. Oh, take a look at this on the right here. Uh, can you read it from here? The billboard says, Introducing Canada's Electric Highway. So it looks like the Trans Canada Highway across Canada. That's why those electric charging stations were set up in Saskatchewan. So they're making it so you can have an electric car and drive across the whole country. That's smart. See, that's smart. That's what I'm talking about. You want me to buy into this electric vehicle stuff? You really, really want me to have an electric vehicle that bad? Make it affordable and make it possible. Build the infrastructure, right? So, hey, they're going for it. Good for them. Cool. As long as you don't make it so expensive that no one can afford it, you know? No one can afford it. Like I've said in past vlogs, I have absolutely nothing wrong with electric vehicles. I think they're fascinating and intriguing. In 600 meters, but turn right on Black Road, Highway 17. For highway transport for us trucks, I don't think it's a viable option yet. But they're working on it, you know, I have faith in humanity. Uh, but for a car, like if they made a pickup truck, like comparable to my Chevy Silverado, a full size pickup truck. Meters, turn right on Come on, Karen, Black I'm talking about something highway important 17. here. Karen, Karen! If they made a full-size pickup truck that looked good, that looked tough, that could do all the things that my pickup truck did, I, I'd consider it, I would. I, I think I might actually go for it, if they make it affordable. Like make it the same price or cheaper than a gas vehicle, sure I'll go for it. But if you're gonna charge me $100,000 for it, no thanks. But my, my concern still is, where is that electricity coming from? Where is the power plant that brings us this electricity that I'm charging my car with? Is that power plant polluting the environment more than my tailpipe would have in a gas vehicle? That's a good question. A lot of them are. And you guys know my concerns about the batteries, right? Like. Once those batteries don't hold a charge anymore, like they don't last forever. So once they don't hold a charge anymore, they gotta be replaced and that's really expensive. Uh, you can chalk that into uh, maintenance. Left on. Second line east, Highway 17. I really wanna be a part of this conversation, Karen, but you really don't understand what's going on. You're talking about electric cars. So uh, these batteries, they need to be replaced. And when they get replaced, I'm sure they can design industries and technologies that reuse the batteries for something else but that but right now those batteries just go sit in a landfill for like 50,000 years right and it's I don't like that idea but whatever whatever this whole big energy electric car thing is getting big you know show me a pickup truck that looks cool that does everything my pickup truck can do doesn't look like a spaceship or some kind of weird weird object. I want it to look like a truck. I want it to look like a real pickup, like a full-size pickup. Yeah, we can talk. We can talk and make sure they're designed for Canadian winters. Yeah, totally on board. But speaking of electric vehicles, I'm gonna pull in here and buy some diesel fuel. Debating if I should shower first and then fuel or fuel and then shower. These are the decisions that are plaguing my mind today. I think I'm gonna 
I'm gonna shower for now. Now I'm gonna fuel first so I don't get my hands and stuff all dirty. And then I'll go clean myself in the shower and then we'll go. Okay, brilliant idea, Josh. Brilliant idea, I'm glad I consulted myself. Sometimes you just gotta consult the experts, you know? I'm really happy that they built this place here. It was built a few years ago. Yeah, it used to be just a car block across the road. And now they got parking and showers and stuff. Oh, and they got trucks backing up. Okay. Okay. I'll wait here, bud. I'll wait right here. Where is he? There he is. Oh, it's a Kenworth. Okay, so I forgive you. Okay. Good choice of trucks. He's got a tiny sleeper, though. Can you imagine doing long haul with such a tiny sleeper? Yikes. All right, I'm gonna go around you then, bud. Okay. See, I want a bigger sleeper. Bigger the better. I want to be comfortable. But I also want to look good at the same time, so. Kenworth W900 Studio Sleeper. That's my choice. One day. One day. All right, pump 20, I choose you. I don't, I don't know why it's pump 20. I only see like six pumps here. There we go, beautiful. Let's do this. All cleaned up, smelling great. Hey, wait, wait, I need to put deodorant on, folks. Oops, if we, for, if we forget to do this, that nice smell won't last as long. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, much better. There you go. Now we smell great. Okay, so we're uh, leaving Sault Ste. Marie here. You have 12 hours and 34 minutes of remaining drive time. All right, so we got a bit of time ahead of us. 1,378 kilometers now. And we're doing really good for fuel economy with this light load, they're really good. Okay, so let's get moving. I wanna draw your attention to those two Kenworths just to the left there. Beautiful trucks. The one on the far left, the blue and black one, I know him. I don't know if I can call him a buddy of mine. I'd call him a buddy of mine. I've met up with him twice now on the road. He uh, watches the videos. He came to say hi to me today. He used to drive an old Freightliner, or a, a Freightliner, I think, or a Volvo. But look at what he's in now, my dream truck. Kenworth W900 Studio Sleeper. He says there's so much room in the back there. And he's on the road for months at a time. Look at that thing. Lucky guy. I want to drive that truck. <laughs> okay, let's get on the road. Let's do this. The clouds are coming in. We got to run. We got to get out of here. I'm so glad the snow is not here yet. I probably shouldn't have come through this way because I can't get through here. Okay, I thought there was a driveway going past there. Oh, there is sort of on the side here. All right, well, we'll sneak through here. I was probably supposed to turn the other way and go out the driveway the other way. I thought there was... My bad. My bad. I wanted to show you all that Kenworth. It's alright. We'll just sneak on through. Just sneak on through. I'm not too sure when we'll be home tomorrow. Uh, we can almost get there today if I push it hard, but I'm not going to push it that hard because I'm trying to save fuel. Probably tomorrow afternoon, something like that. Hopefully with enough time to enjoy some time at home. I don't think Brit works tomorrow.
construction again. You know, Ontario just rebuilt all of these roads or redid them in the last few years. Went into massive debt for it, right? But they did it cheap. Now they're fixing it all again and the road is terrible. I don't know why we can't just, you know, build roads right. I know it costs a lot more money, but I mean, it's safer, it lasts longer, less construction. They always take the cheaper run. I guess we can only spend what we can afford. I can understand that. So we're uh, between, uh, well, we're not quite to Marathon yet. We're pretty much straight across the lake from northern Michigan. On the Canadian side. Beautiful country out here. Is the camera picking it up yet? That new... I guess it's not new anymore, but those blue lights on the Nipigon Bridge just light up the sky. Sort of like that pink light the other day, that purple light, right? But now it's a blue light. Everyone likes to light up the clouds for some reason. This bridge, I've told you before, is a single bridge that connects Eastern Canada and Western Canada together. It's a river that goes through here, and this is the only way across for transport trucks anyways that I know of. There might be a way way up there, but... So when this bridge shuts down, east-west economy shuts down. But they did go and make it pretty fancy. And they built it right the second time. There it is. The first time they built it, it buckled the first winter because they forgot that it gets cold here. So everything got shut down for a while. And then they built the second half of it. And that one's been good so far. I guess they learned their lesson. So now both highways 11 and 17 have been joined together and now it's just one highway through to Western Canada. We're still about uh, three, 400 miles from Western Canada. Long ways to go through the wilderness here yet. Eastern Canada and Western Canada, the populations are very far apart and there's this tiny little road snaking through the wilderness connecting them. Not much in between. I've never been to this truck stop before. We stopped here last night and it was completely foggy. Like I couldn't see those bins right there. I came in from the yard there and I had to slowly creep through the yard here, over here to where I found the back of the parking lot and then slowly back into a spot. I got out and looked, made sure there was nothing there and then slowly backed in. There's luckily there's nothing around me apparently. I went for a walk too, so. Oh, was it foggy last night. So I woke up today, I was like, where am I? I didn't see any of this here yesterday. <laughs> I didn't know any of it was here. Ah. Uh, so anyway, that's interesting. So we're in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, at a truck stop I don't usually stop at. We're at like, uh, we're at the Husky. Um, what's the address of this place here? One second, um, one second. Bear with me here, people. Cue the Jeopardy music. Uh, da, da, here, uh, Santorelli Husky Travel Center. It's on uh, Arthur Street West, so it's not a, it's not on the main route. And I sort of went around different scenic route last night, and it got really foggy just as I pulled in here, like just as I was coming up here, like a mile away. That's when the fog started, so I figured I should probably call it a night. I didn't want to hit a moose or anything. Lucky I found this place. But yeah, uh, this, this is where we're gonna end today's vlog, I guess. Uh, to, we're gonna start tomorrow's vlog because today is tomorrow, and tomorrow is today. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell all your friends about the vlog. Share them out on your social media if you think that it's worth it. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the thumbs down button if you thought, if you thought it was terrible. If you thought it was terrible, share it out to all your friends on social media. Show them how bad it is. Let them all see it. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.